You choose. Bourbon, Guide me. Bourbon or rye, Sarah? Let's do bourbon. Let's start. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you even ask? Oh, oh. What a funny bone. Man toughen down. up. Toughen up. Man down. Don't you cry. Don't you cry. Don't you cry. <laughs> Don't you cry. Okay. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. All right. I'll live. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're, we're going to do this uh, chicken cock Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey, 90 proof. We're gonna I get never it. get to open them, you guys. Yeah. Do, do me proud, Sarah. With that cork. Oh, it's not my fault. It's the cork's fault. Okay. I really like how they changed this bottle to put the chicken wire on, the, like, in the embossed thing. I think it makes it look a lot nicer, which mm -hmm. a lot of people argue, like, well, I don't care what it looks like. And I'm like, very true, but I think it it's fun. I it's like, fun. It, I don't know a lot of other bottles that have this type of a texture. Agreed. I think it's cool. It is very cool. Very on brand for them. Full disclosure, this and the rye were sent to us by the distillery, but of course our review is our own, but thank you to them for providing us a bottle so we didn't have to, you know, go out and buy one ourselves. Sure. So that's cool. I got a lot of apple on the nose. There is a lot of apple. But also some like cinnamon stick. Mm. It's kind of got an apple pie vibe going on the nose. And what's cool about nice and warm. the brand anyway, um, is this brand was started in my hometown, Paris, Kentucky. Really? Yeah. Bourbon County, Paris, Kentucky. Yeah. Back in the 1800s, a little blurb here. One of the oldest bourbon brands in the U.S., Chicken Cock was established in 1856 in Paris, Bourbon County, Kentucky. Seven decades later, it was a staple of prohibition era speakeasies, including the world famous Cotton Club. Huh. Known as the famous old brand, Chicken Cock died after World War II. Oh, probably from. What, what, did, what did people die from in that era? I don't know. Rickets or something. I don't know. Um, but has but, but now returned to its rightful place in the pantheon of great American heritage whiskeys. Okay. Pantheon. Uh, it says Owensboro, Kentucky. I took a picture of it at a store so we could talk about the price. 90 proof, as you said. No age statement, I I which did. I can kind of tell. Oh, here it is. Okay, uh, fifty-seven ninety-nine. This was at maybe total wine, probably. Yeah. So fifty-seven ninety-nine. The rye is going to be seventy-two ninety-nine. I could see that. I mean, I always can see rye being more expensive just because rye is a more expensive grain. Burn, yeah. Oh, Matt from the Whiskey Crusaders always coming in with the info when we need it. He said the distillery burned down. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah, apple, kind of apple-y on the nose. Um, tell you what, it is It is bringing some heat for a 90 It's bringing over. some heat for a 90. It's sticking around on the tongue. Not so much getting that Kentucky hug just yet. I got it. But... I think it's got a vanilla note on the finish. It does remind me of like an apple pie with ice cream or something like that. Um, so I think I think the hmm. quality is there. I just fifty seven is a lot yeah. for a ninety proof, you know. I agree. There uh, says says us who just paid how much for that hundred proof <laughs> William Heaven Hill, but that's different. It's thirteen years old. Yeah, this is non age dated, so that's something to to keep in mind right. as well. Yeah, and that's also a once a year le. This is you know all year round. That's true too. So, um, I, I'm I'm. Getting a, a, a graininess now, sometimes that can be a bad thing. It's not so much that, it's not like a youth so much, but it is sort of grain forward and I'm trying to kind of put my finger on what that grain is exactly. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that's where I'm getting like a pie crust type of That might kind of be it. Yeah. Ish. I'm not sure. Almost like a, a very light cornbread. Hmm. So the corn's coming through. So the corn's coming through, yeah. I mean, it shouldn't, Take a rocket scientist Surprise. to... Surprise! The corn's coming through <laughs> the corn's, in this bourbon. The corn's coming through, but there's corn in my bourbon. There's at least 51% of it. At least! Yeah. No, I like kind of the the spice for 90 proof. It's reading more probably like 100 proof to me. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't really have any real sharp edges, except the, the graininess, which might be bordering on youth. Mm-hmm. But, hmm. I want to compare it to the rye. Yeah, okay. Hey, we just wanted to pop in here real quick to tell you guys about our home on the internet. It is whiskeyambitions.com. It's where you can get things such as t-shirts, like the one I'm wearing, uh, Glen Cairns, water glasses, uh, rocks glasses, challenge coins, and more always coming soon. That's whiskeyambitions.com. You can visit patreon.com slash it's bourbonite and join our Patreon community for as little as $1 a month. Uh, we do patron-only podcasts, we do after-the-episode exclusives, and more always coming to you there. That's right. All right, back to the episode. Now, the rye, as I said, 
Uh, we saw it in the store for $72.99. It's also 90 proof. Very Better. <laughs> see what's going on in the chat. Well, Matt's saying that the bourbon is four years and the rye is two. Interesting, but it does take rye less time to mature. That's right. Yeah, you can usually get away with a younger rye. Mm -hmm. So this is also 90 proof. Ah. Ooh. Age at least two years, yeah. I was that looking is... for where they had to put it on the bottle, and they did put it on the bottle, so good for them. Definitely. This one. Definitely rye. They don't have to put it on the bottle. This one, under four, they do. Huh. And they have. So good. So good. <laughs> good for them. A fuzz. Yeah, definitely. You can tell by the nose. It's a rye. It's uh -huh. got that almost evergreen, minty, Winter mint spice, type of nose. Clove. Yeah. <sighs> ah, 95% rye mash bill, Todd That's, says. That explains the nose. That is yeah, completely super believable. Minty. Completely believable, yep. But also kind of soft. It gets hot at the end. It is pretty soft for 95% rye. Definitely still minty, but there's a savory note in there too. Of course, it's just 90 proof, so that might be kind of adding to that? it. I think it's a weird combination of like coming on winter mint and then going to spearmint. Maybe a light clove kind of dancing around in there. There's something savory in there too. Mm, more cornbread? <laughs> no, not in no, this one. Almost like bacon grease, but no, I don't know, it might be. And PC Fry says, I always I think it is. call the rye taste pine needles. Yeah, that's what I mean, like that mm -hmm. evergreen. And yeah. it has that like eucalyptus effervescence type of finish. So whereas, mm -hmm. you know, they're both kind of hot on the, on the finish. I think yeah. this one, it almost makes you feel like you can take a deeper breath or something like that. It yeah. kind of clears you out. Sort of like if you have, I mean, not the same sensation as wasabi, but how it kind of just gets you. Yeah, almost like stepping into a, uh, a steam room that kind of has that menthol type of, the rye is kind of adding to like the heat of a room. And then that- It's very yeah, herbal. Herbal, herbaceousness, mm -hmm. there you go. <laughs> I find the, the flavors in the rye much more interesting. Double mint? <laughs> yeah, maybe. It's mellow, but it's still got rye flavors going on. Like this would definitely be something for me for like fall. I think this would be great in a certain kind of cocktail too. However, at $75 a bottle, I don't know that I wanna put it in a cocktail. Agreed, and also- I don't think I, mean, I that, do. That 90 proof, it, it can cut through. It doesn't have to be I above that, but- the, you, That 95% rye can a, cut through. Yeah, 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 that would for sure. A certain type of cocktail, you <clears throat> hit it right with that. Yeah, it couldn't be, like if it was fruity mm. and lemon forward and stuff like that, I don't think this is the right thing, but for a certain type of- I'm gonna of drink. Pull my bourbon glass back. Get a sploosh more. Mm. Yeah, it's almost got like a smoked ham or bacon grease type of mm. note in there, hiding underneath the herbal. That makes it a kind of a savory quality that offsets the mintiness, which I think is a lot more interesting. Like normally, I don't gravitate to 95% rice because it just feels like licking a Christmas tree <laughs> to me or something like that. Shh. It's typically, not, it's not your time. Uh. <laughs> typically, I think we found that we like 95 fives that are older, like your whistle pigs, yeah. and well, those are 100, but um, older high rye rise are better for us than younger ones that are 95 mm -hmm. five. But I think at two years, this is it's very pretty, interesting. It's very interesting. I wish it was this price. I agree. Or lower, but tell you what, Going back to the bourbon after the rye is a much more enjoyable experience. So going back to the bourbon, oh, yeah, did you do that? do that? No, because okay. you still have it. Okay. Okay. You're trying the bourbon again after the rye. Ooh. Yeah, it smells better, right? It does. Less sweet apple. Mm-hmm. For sure, for sure. I mean, I do think when you go back to it, by comparison, it, it is better than I thought it was at first. Yeah. Uh, I still think... Hmm. Yeah, I definitely like this, the bourbon, better after coming off the rye. I'm sticking with the rye. No, I wasn't saying that I pick the bourbon. I was saying I like the bourbon mm. more after coming off the rye. I agree with that. I still like the rye best. I do think the rye is a little bit more unique. Now, nitty gritty time, recommend or not, since this is a, an official uncorking, um, I think the $55, $56 for this bourbon for a 90 proofer 
especially for the age, but ages and everything, but you know, that does come into account as a kind of a bar, right? Um, uh, I don't know. That's hard to give it a recommend. There's so many other things for that money that yeah. you could get two bottles of. Sure. So that's gonna be like this, more to like a that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna say pass here. Um, and I would say here, I would say yes, give it a try. If you've had something, like again though, if you've had Pikesville, it's a barely rye right. and it's higher proof. So you can't, right. I can't really say go there first and then if you like that, step up here because you're getting more rye content, but lower proof. So that's not really a good, I guess if you like rye and you know you like that minty spearmint, um, you know, eucalyptus, and if, and if 90s around your proof. Right, then I would go with this. Yeah. So. I, because of the price, I'd probably say get it get it at a good price at a bar. You know, get a drink of it first. Fair. Um, I think ri high rise are divisive. So yeah, agreed. Then you should know that that's the, the road you want to go. Yeah. And we've had one of their limited editions too. Right, like the eight year. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh, yeah. I that remember was, liking that. That was pretty good. Well, I hope you enjoyed that uncorking lifted from one of our live shows. I know we did. If you want to catch the show live and participate in the chat, you can join us on Sunday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's right. Make sure you are subscribed so you get those reminders about that. In fact, if you haven't subscribed already, you can do so by clicking right up here. There's also suggestions of other videos right down here. We hope to catch you over there in those. Until then, thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Chad. Okay. Drink more bourbon. Mm.